Okay, so here we're going to do functions. Uh, so let's write this down. So functions. Okay, a function is something like this. So let's say we have f of x maps to x squared. So that's a function. Okay, this can be written as f of x equals to x squared. Okay. So let's say we have a function f of x equal to x squared and another function, let's say g of x equals to 2x minus 1. Now we can get the composite function, the composite, composite functions, okay? So you can have f of g of x, you could have g of f of x, you could even have f of f of x etc etc you can have any combination you like okay so let's see f of g of x so f of g of x so that means function g goes into f so function f is x squared at the moment and function g is 2x minus 1 so f of g of x will be 2x minus 1 squared so all you do is instead of the x here you substitute the entire function g of x so 2x minus 1 squared would be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So there you go. So that's f of g of x. Now if I do g of f of x, so g of f of x, so that means function f goes into function g wherever there's x. So it would be 2 bracket x squared minus 1. So that means 2x squared minus 1. So you can see f of g of x and g of f of x are not exactly the same. They're different. In fact, they're very different. Okay, they're both quadratics, but they are different. Now let's try f of f of x. So f of f of x. So that means the function f goes into itself. So you have x squared as the function f. If you put that back into x squared, so that means x squared squared. So that means x to the 4. Okay. Now if I do g of g of x as well, so that is g goes into itself, so it would be 2 bracket 2x minus 1, close bracket minus 1, so that's same as 4x minus 2 minus 1, which is same as 4x minus 3. Okay, so those are composite functions, okay? So now we could do inverse functions, okay? So let's try and do inverse function. So I'll start that on a new page. Okay. So inverse means, so let's say you have function f and you got a number going to another number. So when you do inverse, what should happen is it's the uh, function which will bring you that number back to where it started. So let's just write this down. Inverse functions okay so let's say we have f of x equals to 2x plus 5 okay now if you want to work out f inverse so the question is let's say find f inverse okay so what we need to do we need to let y equals to 2x plus 5 and then swap x and y. So that means x equals to 2y plus 5. So all I did is I just swapped the two letters x and y. I wrote where I wrote x where y is and y where x is. Okay? Alright, so now make y the subject from this new equation. So the x minus 5 over 2 equals to y, isn't it? If I take away 5 and divide by 2, then you get the you make y the subject. Okay? So now this is the inverse function. So f inverse of x equals to x minus 5 over 2. There you go. Now let's see if we are right. So let's try a number. So we've got f of x equals to 2x plus 5. So f of 1 equals to 2 times 1 plus 5, which is 2 plus 5, which is 7. Okay? Now f inverse, if I put this 7 into f inverse, it should give me one back. Let's see if it works. So f inverse is x minus 5 over 2. 
So that'd be 7 minus 5 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. So it does give me the number back, so that means that is the correct inverse. So you can always check once you've done an inverse question to see if you got the correct inverse by substituting a number and then check what the answer is and you put that answer into the inverse, it should give you the number you originally put into the function back again. Okay? So that's what inverse functions are. Now, I want to do range and domain. Okay, so let's just do uh, a question, let's do a simple question just to kind of get the idea of what range and domain is because this is a section where a lot of people actually um, go wrong. So let's just write this down. Range and domain. Okay. So domain is the set of values of x where the function exists and the range is the set of values of y where the function exists or the image of the function. So this is the um, domain of the function, that's the image of the function. So let's say, so let's say we have a function fx which is x plus 1 and the domain is, so x is a real number such that x is less than or equal to 4 but greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so we have a restriction here. Basically, this particular function is x plus 1 but it's only between 1 and 4 for the x values. Okay, and x is a real number. So the question could be, find range of f and domain and range of f inverse. Okay, so we have two questions. So they want us to find the range of f first of all and the domain and the range of f inverse. So if I just sketch that, so if you just let uh, I'm write it slightly below. Let y equals to x plus 1. So you know it's going to be a straight line here. So when x equal to 0, well it doesn't exist at 0. So let's do when x equal to 1, y is equal to 1 plus 1 which is 2. And when x equals to 4, y is equal to 5. So if I just do a quick sketch of this. So 1, 2, and 4, 5. So let's say something like that. 1, 2, 4, 5. So this is a function. Okay, so I'm going to do shaded circles because both these points are inclusive. Now you can see the y value here is 2, the y value here is 5, x value here is 1, x value here is 4. Okay, so this function is between those two points. So therefore the range of fx is fx less than or equal to 5 but greater than or equal to 2 because this function only exists between 2 and 5 on the y-axis. So is that clear? So we have a domain here. The domain is only between 1 and 4 which is what's given. So the range for those values are here between 2 and 5. Okay. I know this sounds very abstract, but you just have to imagine the picture and uh, just to see what happens. So the domain is the values of x where the function exists, and the range is the values of y. Okay? So we just need to write what values of x is there, and then what values of y the function is uh, there for. Okay? So that's all it is. Now, we have a little bit more to work out. So they say work out the domain and range of f inverse. Okay, so now let's work out the f inverse. So we know y equals to x plus 1. So that means x equals to y plus 1. So x minus, y, x minus 1 equals to y. So therefore f inverse of x equals to x minus 1. Now remember, domain, domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse and the range of f equals to the domain of f inverse. So it's kind of vice versa. So the domain of the function is the range of the inverse 
and range of the function is the domain of the inverse. So it's quite easy to write down what the domain here is. The domain for the inverse here is the range for the function. So the function is the range for the function is between 2 and 5, so the domain here, so x is a real number and x is between 2 and 5. That's the domain for that. Okay? 2 and 5. And then the range for f inverse, so range for f inverse is basically the domain here. So it will be less than 4, greater than or equal to 1. That's it. So this is a range, sorry, this is a dom yeah, this is a range of f inverse. I know this is one of those chapters which are very confusing to everybody, but just try and make sense of it. Okay, so you're given the domain of the function, so you worked out the range of the function, and then you work out the inverse function, and then we know the domain of the function is the same as the range of the f inverse, and range of the function is the same as the domain of the f inverse, and then you just work your way there. Now, clearly, your function in the exam is not going to be something simple like x plus 1, but you can use the same principle to work it out. So if you, for example, got an exponential or log function, just sketch the graph. Just sketch the part of the graph for the domain given, and then see where the graph is, exists. You can work it out graphically, and then write it down. Usually it's a one mark question, so you don't, you're not expected to do any major working out. So that's how we do domain and range for functions. So I'll leave it there. It is a slightly longer video than normal. And then in the next video, hopefully we can do exponentials and some trigonometric functions. Okay, I'll leave it there.